Well, good morning to everyone. And uh, sorry if I seem a bit out of breath. I've run from um, Macrofeld this morning. Um, not all the way. I, I did have the use of Hannah's car, so that was helped a lot. Um, but just a bit of a, a rush this morning. So a couple of things just to, uh, to um, um, mention. Um, I will be um, going away tomorrow. Uh, I'll be away for a week. Uh, Nikki and uh, the family have already gone over. Uh, it's the Higgins family reunion. They do this every couple of years. Um, so I hesitate to say this because it'll go online and some of them might see it. Uh, but um, uh, I've stayed in Exeter, so I'm only away one Sunday. Um, and uh, that's a blessing to me. Whether it's a blessing to you or not, I'm not sure. But um, So I'll be away during the week. And if there is the need for the help of a minister during that week, you can contact uh, Ruth Patterson uh, in, in Ballymena. Her number's on the sheet there. Uh, there'll be a message on my answering machine as well if you need to um, pick it up that way. And then next Sunday, uh, the preachers here uh, will be Miss Heather Boland uh, in the morning, and then David Gray uh, is doing the service uh, in the evening. Now let's sing just a little song to uh, tune our hearts as we come together to, to worship. Uh, the theme this morning uh, from the book of Proverbs is that of uh, friendship and supporting one another and building each other up. And so we'll sing, as we are gathered, Jesus is here. Sing it twice. And let us join in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are gathered together in the name of Jesus, the one who is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came into our midst to live and die, to pay the price for our sins, and then that you have risen again and ascended to glory and are at God's right hand forever interceding for us. And so, Lord, we come with confidence into your presence this morning to worship you through our friend, the Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord God, that you will forgive us for our sins, things this week past that we have thought and said and done that have offended you and have hurt those around us. Thank you that through Christ all our sins can be forgiven and we are washed clean. And so we come into your presence, trusting in your grace and mercy, not in any goodness of our own, but, Lord, we put our trust in you. We pray, Father, that you will speak to us through your word, 
that it will encourage us and build us up and help us in our relationships with one another, with our friends, and with you, and with our greatest friend of all, the Lord Jesus. So Lord, bless this time together and build us up. And together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our Bible reading is a short uh, section from Proverbs, and Tracy is going to read uh, for us some of the verses uh, from chapter 1. Our reading today is taken from Proverbs chapter 1, verses 10 to 33. My son, if sinners entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let's lie and wait for someone's blood. Let's waylay some harmless soul. Let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole like those who go down to the pit. We will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Throw in your lot with us and we will share the common purse. A son, my son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths. For their feet rush into sin, they are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net in full view of all the birds. These men lay, lie in wait for their own blood. They weigh lie only themselves. Such is the end of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the lives of those who get, get it. The title is Warning Against Rejecting Wisdom. Wisdom calls aloud in the street. She raises her voice in the public squares. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. In the gates of the city, she makes her speech. How long will you simple ones love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? If you had responded to my rebuke, I would have poured out my heart to you and made my thoughts known to you. But since you rejected me when I called and no one gave heed when I stretched out my hand, since you ignored all my advice and would not accept my rebuke, I in turn will laugh at your disaster. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you, then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me. Since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, since they would not accept my advice and, sh and spurn my rebuke. They will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. For the way waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. And we thank God for his word. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tracy. Thank you for um, reading. And thank you also to Tracy and to Peter uh, and to Nicola in particular, who were the main drivers and organizers of all the rest of uh, the leaders for the Holiday Bible Club. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, few uh, nights there from Tuesday uh, through to um, fr Friday. And we've got a little um, clip of uh, some of the things that went on, um, just to give the rest of you as a church, I know you were praying for it. Uh, well, a lot of you were involved in various ways, but uh, those uh, who weren't were, were praying for the Holiday Bible Club. So, uh, run the, the VT, as they used to say in the old days. No, I won't be afraid. You are with me. You are right beside me every
lost and afraid till you found me. There you go. Uh, who knew that Elijah had such knobbly knees? And uh, it was great to have a ginger beard again for even just a few minutes. So there's a, a little uh, sense of um, some of the fun and games and different things that, uh, that the boys and girls did. Uh, but above all, uh, they learned Bible stories. They learned the Bible verse. They sang about the Lord's love. And I hope that we showed them as leaders uh, something of God's care uh, for them uh, as, a, as a church and as, as individuals. So I uh, want to um, pray uh, in our intercessions um, in a moment. No, so we'll sing first, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll pray about that. We're going to sing first, uh, What Gift of Grace is Jesus My Redeemer?
So now in our prayers for others, let's uh, pray God's continued blessing on the work of the Holiday Bible Club and uh, for other ongoing um, similar events. Uh, the Elam will have one this week, I think, and then the Cunningham the following week. And uh, Nicholas off with the uh, CSSM um, team, I've forgotten, somewhere in the back of beyond. Um, not a civilized, well-known place like Cullibacky, it's somewhere far away. Uh, uh, but uh, trust that that will be a, a blessing uh, to those involved there. Also for the Castlewell on Holiday Week, which um, started uh, yesterday, and a few of our friends will be there. Um, and uh, then uh, to pray for a gospel mission that's taking place in Cullibacky, a drive-in mission uh, at the Cullibacky College in Potter Street from Monday to uh, Friday of this week at half past seven, and to pray for the two men who will uh, preach at that, um, and then to uh, pray for situations around the world. And then just quietly, we'll be aware of certain people from our own church and congregation and circle of family and friends who are unwell at the moment, and to pray God's uh, help and healing for them. Gracious God, we thank you for the Holiday Bible Club and that you kept us safe, and that we had great uh, fun together with the boys and girls, and that we were able to share your love with them. And we pray indeed that the boys and girls will learn that they need not be afraid, because if they put their trust in you, uh, whether uh, it's um, the lion's den or the battle against um, the pagans on Mount Carmel, um, or uh, having to stand up and, and, and speak for you like Esther did uh, before uh, the king. We, we, can be, uh, we can be confident that uh, you are with us and we don't need to be afraid. Uh, so Lord, we pray that the boys and girls uh, will indeed have learnt that and that we as leaders too uh, will be encouraged and challenged uh, by that opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for other events, similar ones that are ongoing and will be going on here in the village here, as well as in other places. And we pray your blessing upon each and every gospel outreach that seeks to uh, reach people. We pray too, Lord, for uh, the two men who will be conducting the, the gospel mission in the, in the car park at the college. You will bless them as they preach and teach your word. Uh, this week coming, may there be fruit for that. And for every other work and labor in the gospel, uh, wherever it is. We pray for ongoing um, uh, Bible teaching sessions. We, we pray for Castlewell and Holiday Week and for those who are involved in that with the Methodist family particularly. Uh, we pray too for New Horizon and for uh, uh, many people who will go um, to that, for those who will uh, lead seminars and, and lead the Bible sessions, uh, that there'll be much blessing and encouragement in the summer, summer months. We pray to Lord for situations around the world, and we're concerned again this morning to uh, hear about uh, uh, potential escalation of the conflict in and around um, Israel, uh, with a threat from Hezbollah in um, the Lebanon and potential full-scale uh, war there, as well as the ongoing situation uh, in Gaza. And we pray, O oh God, that somehow there might be a peaceful resolution. Uh, to this um, dreadful conflict. For other situations in, in Sudan and uh, in Ukraine, and uh, Lord, there are so many places around uh, the world that we hear about and then perhaps forget about. Uh, we're aware, too, of increasing tensions, Lord, within our own communities, uh, with the concerns about um, migrants coming in, uh, legal and illegal, uh, concerns about um, uh, how they will um, integrate, and the tensions that are increasingly seeming to, to build uh, in Britain um, and also uh, in Ireland. And so Lord, we pray that there might be uh, resolutions to these conflicts, there'll be wisdom uh, for the police and for the authorities and particularly for the government, uh, that they will act wisely and well in uh, these situations. And the situation will be de-escalated and that um, uh, people with particular agendas on one side or the other uh, will not inflame passions and cause um, violence, and particularly as it has its impact upon the police, who very often are caught in the middle. So we pray for the Chief Constable, and uh, here in Northern Ireland, for John Boucher. Pray to Lord for Chief Constables and all of the forces in England, uh, that you will give them uh, wisdom, and for the Home Secretary and for all who are involved uh, in making the right decisions and saying the right thing in the right way at the right time. 
And then, Lord, finally, in this quiet moment, we bear in mind some of our family and friends, uh, members of our congregation, folks who have been in hospital or who are waiting for tests and results and ongoing further treatments, and some who are not uh, with us this morning, not well. We ask, Lord, for your presence with them. And in this quiet moment, we pray uh, for those who come to mind. Lord, hear and answer all our prayers. We ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we bring our offering to God for his work. We'll sing an old favorite hymn uh, on this theme of a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear.
So the next theme in the book of Proverbs that I want to uh, pick up is that of uh, friendship. And again, the, the outline uh, is borrowed uh, from a series that Vaughan Roberts did many years ago. And I have printed uh, the little outline and there are copies of it on the, uh, in the two foyers. So if you want to pick one up and, or if you missed some of the other ones and you want to pick up some of the themes, you can, you can I think there's still a few copies left of previous weeks and you can, you can take those. Friendship, I think we'll all recognize, is something that's very important to us. And I've never followed it. Some of you, um, maybe a little bit younger than me perhaps, but, um, but older than the young ones, if you know what I mean, somewhere in the middle. Um, for Johnny and Amy's age, that's kind of great, you know. Uh, um, uh, you might have um, followed Friends on TV. Um, no, you need to be older than Johnny and Amy. Oh, they, they, they're getting nods. Um, uh, so I've never particularly watched it, but the theme tune... Kind of, I, I can hear the theme tune in my head, and there's a line in it that is very um, striking, which of course why they uh, chose it, chosen it as, a, as their theme tune. I'll be there for you. Um, and even if you've never watched Friends, you might have heard that tune or that song might be familiar to you. And of course, that's what the whole theme, the whole program was about, about a group of friends who would support each other and be there for each other, whether they always were or not, I'm not sure. I didn't watch enough episodes to have uh, uh, deep knowledge, but it strikes a chord with our hearts, doesn't it? Um, I, wonder, I wonder, have you got a friend who you could really uh, depend on, someone that you would say, well, whatever the circumstances, whatever the situation, uh, there is someone who will be there for me. I wonder also, is there anybody who would think of you in those terms? Is there somebody who would regard you as the kind of friend that, whatever the circumstances, you would be there for them? And the book of Proverbs has a lot of things to say about a lot of different subjects. And we picked up one or two, and we'll pick up a few more uh, when I come back uh, the week after next. Uh, But perhaps one of the most moving and powerful themes is this one of of friendship. Apparently Mother Teresa was once asked what the biggest problem in the world was. What's the biggest issue that she faces? And she said this, striking, uh, given her context and uh, the work that she did for many decades in India and the poorest amongst the poorest people. She said the greatest disease in the world is loneliness. Loneliness. I remember a quote that I picked up years ago. In fact, when I was a student, so it's 40 years ago or more, somebody in another university, in Leeds, I think it was, had seen this bit of graffiti scratched into the desk. And uh, this person had written, there are 10,000 people in this university, and I'm lonely. Being lonely, being Friendless, being without someone that we can share with and talk to is a very serious issue. Friendship is important. Five things, uh, these are five things that all begin with the letter C. And again, as I say, um, this is um, Vaughan Roberts' um, outline. Uh, First of all, uh, friendship is close. We need um, close friends. Proverbs 18.24 says this, A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now, I guess that's one of the Proverbs that maybe you've heard before. I'm sure you've all perhaps read through the book of Proverbs, but there are that many of them. Sometimes, you know, you you wouldn't remember them all. Um, But that's one that is quite often quoted in other contexts. There is a friend, in my head I still hear it in the old King James Version, (laughs) there is a friend who sticketh closer than a brother. Now, because we're familiar with it, we maybe don't quite get the the weight of it, because it was written to um, middle Near Eastern culture, uh, where family is the most important thing, and relationships within a family are central. Um, So a brother 
is your closest ally. So when the proverb writer says, there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother, that is really saying something important. And we'll conclude with a reference to that at the end as well. Close friendships are important. They can be difficult to maintain, particularly in a more mobile world. Um, I've got a good excuse. Uh, I've been an itinerant for the last 40 years. As a Methodist minister, I've served in seven different circuits. So I've moved from one place to another. And whenever you go to one place, you get to know some people, and then you're moved on again. And, and well, I suppose it's not good for a minister to have particularly close friendships within one congregation. Um, sometimes um, that can cause a, a few problems if it's perceived that the minister is particularly friendly with so-and-so and so-and-so and so and so and doesn't really bother about other people. Um, uh, that can cause some, some, some tensions. Uh, but as you move around, uh, it's hard to keep, to keep contact. And it was interesting, just I mentioned um, a few weeks ago that I, we had a, a 40th year reunion for the medical school um, class of the graduates of 1984. And it was interesting to see folks, some of them I hadn't seen for literally those 40 years or so. Um, and in some cases, we picked up again. Uh, there were others that kept kind of friendship with over the years and our paths had crossed once or twice. Um, but you can't keep in touch with all your friends from school days or college or university days. And, and inevitably, uh, things will, will be difficult. It's also increasingly difficult in our modern world where everything seems to be sexualized. And so when there's a close friendship, there's the, sometimes the assumption that there's a sexual element to it. Now, of course, it's wise for, uh, and when I was growing up as, a, as a, a teenager, I was kind of taught, you know, be respectful to the girls. And unless it's your girlfriend, um, don't develop too close a relationship with somebody of the opposite sex. And I think that was good advice all those years ago. These days, of course, uh, if you have a close friendship with somebody of the same sex, there might be the thought that there's something sexual in that. Um, and that's very unhelpful, of course. We do need to have close friendships, girls with the girls and men with the men, and between um, sexes as well, without any sexualization in that relationship. And then, of course, uh, the other thing that has developed over the last number of decades is, is technology. And that has made, in some ways, um, a good change, and in other ways, maybe not so good. I don't know how many of you are on Facebook. Uh, I have a Facebook account, which I opened years ago because I needed one um, to be able to get access to stuff. With, you know, you've got, you got to be in the club, as it were. Um, but I hardly ever post anything on it, and I rarely look at it. Um, and I don't know how many friends I've got on Facebook, but I do know uh, that there are people who love to tell you, oh, I've got 700 friends on Facebook. Uh, and I kind of look at them and say, are you serious? Well, they've got 700 people who've kind of clicked on whatever, but you, you, can't, you can't have 700 close friends, can you? Uh, I'm not criticizing that. Uh, I'm just saying that that sometimes friendship can be spread very wide and, and, and it can become a, a frivolous thing, it's just a, a like on Facebook or a, some other social technology these days. True friendship is close. But in order for it to be close, it also needs to be, it also needs to be discerning. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but the companion of fools suffers harm. Proverbs uh, thirteen twenty. Um, and the longer reading that, I'll not reference a verse in it now, but the longer reading in chapter one that, um, that Tracy read for us earlier uh, gave advice about having the wrong kinds of friends. And if we keep company with fools, we can expect to end up in trouble. And so a close friendship that is discerning and wise uh, and is deliberate, we need to make, we need to be intentional about keeping and developing friendships with people. Uh, not necessarily 500, uh, but with a handful of people that are close friends. True friendship is close.
Related to that, then, the second thing is true friendship is constant. Uh, 1717 says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Uh, Faithful and constant. Um, 194 says, wealth brings many friends, but a poor man's friends desert him. Uh, Sometimes uh, friendship can not be faithful and constant. We have a friend for a while, and then well, they're only interested in something, and, and when that's gone, money's gone, it's gone. And 1917, uh, sorry, 19 verse 7 says, a poor man is um, shunned by all his relatives, but how much more do his friends avoid him, though he pursues them with pleading, they are nowhere to be found. Or 25, 19 says, like a bad tooth or a lame foot is reliance on an unfaithful person in times of trouble. Uh, Friendship needs to be um, constant, and it needs to be consistent. There's another seed just popped into my head. Um, Like David and Jonathan, uh, one of the best examples of a close friendship that we have in the Bible. Uh, When David was uh, in trouble, Jonathan was there with him, even at risk to himself. Sometimes friendships fail because of neglect. And we are not constant in maintaining those. 27 verse 10 says, Do not forsake your friend and the friend of your father. Do not go to your brother's house when disaster strikes you. Better a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. Friendship is close. Uh, Friendship is constant. And then true friendship is candid. This is an interesting one. Potentially a a little bit... uh, uh, um, uh, difficult. Let me read two verses. 19, um, 29 verse 5 says, Whoever flatters his neighbor is spreading a net for his feet. And 27, 5 and 6 say, Better is an open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. In other words, flattery is not necessarily part of friendship. Now, Uh, There is a place, of course, for being encouraging and telling our friends they've done something well, uh, showing some uh, appreciation, some encouragement, and giving some praise. And within a relationship, a marriage, within a family relationship between uh, parents and children, children and parents and grandparents, uh, we ought to be encouraging. We ought to uh, praise one another. We ought to be affirming. All of that is, is positive and good. But sometimes in a friendship, it's just empty words, just flattery is a bit of blather, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's said for no sincere purpose. And on the other hand, there are times when true friendship will be candid to point out an issue with a friend. Uh, I've just picked this name out of um, my head at random. I suppose I've got a friend called John, and John has been doing some stuff that really isn't very good. And I might, on the one hand, say to myself, well, you know, I love John too much to mention it. <laughs> Actually, the truth there is, I love myself too much to mention it to John. If I really did love John, and there was something that was harmful to him and, and, and was affecting him spiritually and maybe in other ways, and, and I could see it, and somehow he can't see it, and I say nothing about it, that's maybe just for an easy life for me. True friendship will mean that I think about this carefully, pray about it, choose my words carefully, and say, John, can I talk to you? Can I have a cup of coffee? And can I, can I tell you something as your friend? Am I prepared to take that risk and be candid and honest with my friend and point out something that might be harming him, that he may or may not be aware of, uh, and in either case, be there to help and to uh, support him, even when it's uncomfortable for me. True friendship and flattery don't always go together. True friendship is candid. And then number uh, four, and it's kind of related to that one, is true friendship is careful. Um, don't, um, don't speak too quickly. 
um, chapter um, 16, verse 28 says, A perverse man stirs up dissension, and a gossip separates close friends. Uh, 17.9 says, Whoever covers over an offense promotes love, but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. Or 20.19 says, A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid a man who talks too much. We might return to this when we talk about the tongue, uh, which is another theme that we'll pick up uh, in a few weeks' time. Uh, True friendship is careful. Don't speak too quickly. Don't spread gossip. Don't, don't say the first thing that comes into your head and blurt it out. Um, some of us are more liable to do that than others. Uh, some of us kind of keep things bottled up and we're quiet and, and we rarely speak. And then occasionally it just all builds up and it kind of explodes. <laughs> That's maybe not a good way um, to deal with it um, either. But to, to think um, carefully, to say the right thing in the right way at the right time. Here are three more Proverbs. 27, 14 says, If a man loudly blesses his neighbor early in the morning, it will be taken as a curse. So if you're not particularly a morning type of person, and I come to visit you at 6 o'clock in the morning and blatter on your door and sing a hymn and say, Praise the Lord, brother, it's a wonderful day. Uh, You might not think, actually, that's the kind of pastoral visit that you were really hoping for. Uh, or 20 verse, uh, 25 verse 20 says, uh, like one who takes away a garment on a cold day or like vinegar poured on soda is one who sings songs to one with a heavy heart. Uh, you will know your friends and you will know that some of them maybe are prone to depression or just going through a difficult time. Something's happened in the family or at work or in their life that's, that's just made life difficult for them. And you might be the chirpiest, brightest button in the whole village, and you're full of beans, and, and, uh, and you think, well, I, I'll just go and cheer so-and-so up. And, <laughs> well, actually, um, the way that you go about it uh, isn't really very helpful. You're not empathetic. Uh, you're not understanding where they are at. But like, but like Job's friends, remember how Job went through all those troubles and, and his friends came and had all the answers to his problems and, 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 and really the, the right thing for them to do, to be fair, they did it at the start, was just to sit with them. And sometimes when your friend is going through a very difficult time, a bereavement, a sorrow, a trial of some kind, just pray for them, sit with them quietly, the right words in the right way at the right time. Uh, 2517 says, seldom set foot in your neighbor's house. Too much of you, and he will hate you. Um, Sometimes we need to know when we need to give our friends some space and maybe um, not call on a particular occasion, uh, but just uh, pray for them and care for them. True friendship is close. Real friendship has an intimacy to it. Uh, True friendship is is constant, it's not fickle, Uh, it doesn't chop and change, we're there all the time. True friendship is candid, prepared to be honest, and maybe face difficult issues and grasp a nettle sometimes, even if it's embarrassing or difficult. True friendship is careful, not gossiping, not spreading things, not speaking out of turn, but speaking wisely and carefully and at the right time. And then finally, true friendship is Christ-centered. The final C, Christ-centered. Christ has forgiven us for all our failures in our friendships when we have let somebody down. Of course, we perhaps need to apologize to them and we need to make amends with them. Um, But also we need to know that we are forgiven when we have made a mess of something and, or we haven't done something we should have done, we're feeling bad, you know, I should have, I should have written that note, I should have gone to visit so-and-so, I should have said something. I should. So many times we think we, we've missed an opportunity in something and, and we feel bad about it. And maybe in some sense it is our fault and we have failed, we have fallen. Christ, our friend, forgives us. 
Jesus speaks about friendship. And in John chapter 15, um, we have this wonderful um, text. He's, he's, he's uh, from 13 onwards, he's washed the disciples' feet and he's, he's teaching them this wonderful uh, um, insights. Uh, um, my old friend um, David Gooden wrote a little booklet on uh, John 13 to 17, which he called In the School of Christ. Uh, Jesus is teaching his disciples these intimate lessons before his departure from them, just literally hours before he is taken uh, from them and crucified. And in chapter 15, he talks about being in Christ as, as part of the vine. We, are, we, we belong in him. Um, and then he says this. He says, my commandment is this, that you love one another as I have loved you. And greater love is no one than this. Then he lays down his life for his friends. And you are my friends. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I call you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You are my friends. Christ can meet our deepest longings. He's the one who has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We sing it in that old hymn, and um, we often think of it as a hymn about prayer. Of course it is. Um, but that first line, uh, written in the midst of sorrow and turmoil, of course, what a friend we have in Jesus. You might be someone who said, well, I don't have many friends and uh, I'm not very sociable and maybe it's partly my fault or, or whatever the reason is. Maybe you uh, felt a little something in your heart as I used that opening illustration about, the, about Mother Teresa and, and about the, the student who wrote 10,000 students and I'm lonely. You might be in a crowd, you're here in this, not a huge crowd, but... Uh, crowd here at church this morning and, 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 and you're feeling, well, I'm not sure that there are all that many people who really know me or care about me and, uh, and I'm, feeling, I'm feeling a bit lonely. If that's true, I'm sorry about that and that's not good, not good for us as a church to have anyone who is part of our church fellowship who feels that nobody cares about them. But even if that is true, even if you feel you haven't got a real close friend in the world. Jesus can be your friend. He has given his life for you, and he says there is no greater love than this, than a man lays down his life for his friends. I don't know if there is a friend for whom you would die, or you have a friend who you think would die for you, but Jesus did. And he was, um, he's the one who, who meets our deepest needs, obviously our need for forgiveness and, and for salvation. Uh, but he's the one that, that, that cares about everything in our lives. Uh, he has risen and ascended and is interceding for us, praying now for us, concerned about you and whatever burdens you bear. In fact, it is Jesus, I think, that was primarily in the heart of the proverb writer, whether it was Solomon or someone else, that famous proverb. There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. You may have a human friend like that. I hope you do. Wonderful thing to have. But whether you have or not, Jesus is the friend who sticks closer than a brother or a sister, a mother, a father, a child. True friendship is very precious. Let's be on our guard to make the most of it, to build real, deep, meaningful friendships, to take care of them. And when we make a mess of something, to seek to fix it and not to say, oh, well, I'll find some other friend. If you've had a friend for years and something stupid has happened and either it's your fault or their fault, I don't care. If you can, fix it. 
and have that friendship restored. Sometimes, you know, like a bone that's broken, uh, uh, we're not quite sure whether, whether medically this is entirely true or not, uh, but the, the, the received wisdom is that a bone that's broken and then heals, it'll not break in the same place again. It heals together stronger. There may well be truth in that. But the metaphor, the picture, is true of friendships. When you've had a friendship that's broken and is restored, now it may take time to build trust again, but work at it. True friendship is close, it's constant, it's candid, in other words, it's honest and open, it's careful, and all above all these things, true friendship is Christ-centered. And we'll sing about that in our closing uh, hymn, a song of his love and friendship for us. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as a flood. Let's share the grace together and bless one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.